Good afternoon. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at analog joysticks. Um, in my preparation for filming this particular episode, uh, I ended up going on a journey that I didn't really want to go on. And it had to do with uh, products that were sold that appear to be what they should be, but in reality weren't. Um, I picked up a package, I'll show you here, um, let me get this out of the way, of these type of analog joysticks, the thumb style, uh, very common, see them on all kinds of things these days, especially game controllers, and uh, you can buy them all over the internet and Amazon and so forth, uh, very economically, and uh, I spent the better part of a day trying to figure out why I could not get anything useful out of these things as far as uh, the two potentiometers, the one for x-axis and y-axis. They are, after all, analog uh, joysticks. And, uh, yeah, it was just one of those days where I didn't have my thinking hat on or I would have done this. Uh, got an uh, ohmmeter hooked up to this one, and uh, hopefully I can get this to, to show you what I want to show you. Now, the first thing we'll do is we're going to go this way. It's got a 5K ohm in it. Okay, a lot of them have 10K, 5K, perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and then we'll look at, uh, as I move the stick away, you'll see that it jumps right to 5K. From three, boom, five. We go this way, three, two, boom, down to 15 ohms. No linearity, uh, it just, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. And, uh, you know, I would accept that if one of these was bad out of the package of four, I could deal with that. But all four of them tested the same. Worse yet, I bought more from another vendor, the same type of deal. Uh, they looked very similar, but I thought they were different enough where I could be safe. Turned out they were garbage too. Uh, now, uh, with that little rant out of the way, um, what I did, I uh, went to one of my favorite vendors, uh, we'll see them here. Ada Fruit. Uh, they're pretty well known uh, uh, for being a, a manufacturer of electronic products uh, and uh, providing them to the maker community as well as all the hobbyists and so forth. And they've got a good reputation for having quality products and uh, these are no exception, uh, these joysticks. Uh, they're very well documented, as you would expect. Oftentimes, they have tutorials and everything else. They got a fritzing object for it. All around, they make it fun and easy for you to use the product. And uh, most probably, it's going to work when you get it. Now, granted, you're going to pay a little bit more for it, but what's the value in getting something for pennies on the dollar when it doesn't work in the first place? Uh, so... Uh, what I want to show you now, I'm going to uh, show you with theirs how that should look on the ohmmeter. With it set up on the bench here, I've got my leads underneath, and I'll go one direction slowly. I'll move, oopsie, don't want to drop the thing, but I'll move slowly away, and you'll see it's ever so slowly creeping up to our peak volt uh, resistance. See some linearity there. And 4.8 in the middle-ish. We'll go the other way. And you'll see the numbers dropping down. That's the difference between a quality product and a economical product that is only manufactured to be inexpensive. Uh, so anyhow, uh, I would recommend you focus on buying uh, quality whenever you can. It'll save you a tremendous amount of aggravation and frustration. 
Now it does come in a kit. It'll require you to solder uh, this onto the uh, board that they provide, and they provide header pins as well. And then when you're all set, you can push your little thumb stick on there, and you're all set with a functional uh, joystick. So with that out of the way, and hopefully a valuable lesson to you in the importance of uh, buying quality, buying something that you know is going to work, as opposed to buying something, assuming it'll work, go through all the work, and then find out it was garbage and it just belongs in a garbage can anyhow. Uh, so with that out of the way, uh, we're going to take a look at a fritzing diagram, and then we'll look at the code on how to deal with a two-axis analog joystick that also has um, an, a switch with the press function. Here on the fritzing diagram, we'll take a look at the power circuitry first. Uh, here on the device, on the joystick, you'll have a single ground output. That'll go back to our rail around the corner and over to a ground input on the Pico. Uh, power, I'm providing my analog joystick with 3.3 volts. That'll go out this pin here, up to the power rail, and over into VCC. Now you'll have a vertical and a horizontal, or an X and a Y, depending on how it's worded, axes, and those will go back to two analog inputs. And in my case, my vertical one is going into analog digital channel zero, and the horizontal one is going into the analog to digital channel one. Then we've got a select button. When you press down on this straight down, it'll set off a switch, and that is currently wired into I believe that's GP pin uh, 14. That is your basic wiring. We'll uh, come over here, look at it on the uh, breakout board or on the breadboard. You can see the wiring here. Oop, uh, I got to move that pin in this uh, fritzing over here. It's pin 15, not 14. I guess I didn't recreate my own. Uh, uh, schematic very well when I rebuilt this for the prototyping. Okay, and now we should be all good to go faithfully between breadboard and the fritzing diagram. In the program here, we've got a fair bit of commentary explaining uh, pretty much what I just went over with uh, bad joysticks. Uh, and then uh, we want the range to be, uh, in my opinion, I want the range to be uh, minus to zero, say minus 10 to zero, and then plus 10 back to zero with zero being in the center for each axis. Or it could be a hundred or anything like that, rather than just have some arbitrary odd number like uh, the uh, input we're getting from the analog signal. So that's part of what this routine is going to do. Uh, this is showing us a little bit about uh, the voltage dividers, uh, etc., and uh, and going over the positive and negative values. So negative 10 to 0 in the center, and then 0 to positive 10. Uh, and a warning here to watch out for garbage joysticks. We're going to import a machine and a time library. We're going to set up uh, two objects, uh, one on each channel, analog to digital channel. Forward reverse uh, would be on channel zero, left right will be on channel one. And of course you can label that whatever makes sense for the device you're trying to control. And then SW is our switch, will be on pin 15, and I'm activating the internal pull-up resistor so it's not a, a floating logic gate at that point. Uh, we'll jump right down here to the main loop. Uh, we're going to set our text to nothing, which is just going to be a variable to hold some information. We're going to read the analog pin values from the joysticks, the forward and reverse, and the left and right uh, variables. Uh, and we will also read the switch and store that setting in a variable called S underscore V. Now we're going to take that... Uh, uh, analog input value, and we're going to convert it into something that's useful for us. 
and uh, we will convert the raw values, the raw analog value, into uh, a useful ver value, negative 10 to plus 10, uh, and store that in FR and then LR. So this is our routine to do that. Um, as mentioned, what it's going to do is described up here. We're going to have a little bit of a dead band in the middle because you don't want uh, the possibility where if this if the potentiometer doesn't quite go back to exactly say 5k ohm at dead center, and then it's a slightly off one way or the other way, and then your little device, your little remote control uh, tank or whatever starts driving away on you. You want a dead band in there uh, that's generous enough where you don't have to worry about things accidentally running off on you. And I'm using 1200 as the value for that dead band. Uh, then we'll look at the, the, the math and decision making here. Um, if the reading is uh, less than center value minus dead band, or the reading is greater than center value uh, plus the dead band, meaning we're in a working range of values that's outside our dead band, we're going to set a variable called top at 655, 535, our maximum analog reading, and bottom at zero. Now, of course, those are rough potentiometers almost never give you those two extremes. We're going to break the 16-bit value down into minus values and plus values with zero in the middle. So we're going to say delta is equal to the center value plus the dead band. And then we're going to take our shifted reading, which would be the reading that came in right there, and we will subtract delta that way we get it shifted to one side or the other. Our shifted max would be from the top value minus delta. Again, shifting for that uh, dead band. And then uh, we'll give that an index, and that will be the shifted reading divided by the shifted max. Sounds complicated, but if you work through it with some uh, with a calculator and uh, some known numbers, it makes a lot more sense to do it that way than the way I'm describing it here. Uh, then we're going to reduce, set the reduced range to 10, uh, and this sets the minus value minus to plus range of values returned. And finally, we will return back to the main uh, routine uh, the index times the reduced range, and then that'll get us in that 0 to 10 or 0 to negative 10 range. Uh, if none of this even makes sense, we were in the dead band, so it equals 0, and we're going to return 0 back. Uh, at this point, we'll print out our forward and reverse, and our left and right, and our switch values. Uh, sleep for a tenth of a second and then repeat the loop. So we will go ahead and hit run here and you'll see right now I've got zero zeros and switches in the one state. If I press down on the switch it goes to zero because the switch is pulling it to ground and we used a pull up resistor. As I move my joystick left we start seeing the number go high and then back down and then to the right, and then back down, and then up, goes up, and then gradually back down again, and then finally negative, gradually getting a larger negative number. You get nice smooth linear motion out of it. Um, I will say that almost all of these thumbsticks that I've worked with seem to be um, uh, trying to find the right way to describe it, where you get most of the change uh, in a short distance off a center, and then the you got to move it much further to get a smaller amount of change. It's not perfectly linear with how far you're moving the stick. Kind of hard to describe, but uh, you'll see this uh, especially with um, 
certain potentiometers that are linear versus, uh, I think they used to use the word audio or exponential, so that you get linearity out of uh, audio amplifiers and so forth. Uh, but nonetheless, they do exactly what they're supposed to when it's properly built and designed and manufactured. Uh, so this should get you familiar with working with analog joysticks. Now on the Pico, you've only got three analog to digital channels, so you can't really use two of these. You, well, you can use two, but only one channel on the other one. And you could use uh, the switches on both of them because you've got plenty of uh, digital I.O. So if you've been looking at doing analog joysticks for a little project you're working on, Here's the code to get you up and running and get you started, and you should have a lot of fun with it. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.